Ah, Louis. Perfect timing. As luck would have it. Come, my boy. I would like to have a word with you. Excuse me, monsieur. We cannot let you pass. Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. What's... what's wrong, my lord? Uh, tell me, what's with all the bodyguards? Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. The wrong road? Louis, Sarah has made her own choices of her own free will, and I would like for you to have the same chance. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demons? So you're going to tell me she's wrong, and that she's a liar? She's right. Look at me. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. But why me? Why do I tell you about the greatest secret ever revealed to man? It's... that's right. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. How would you qualify your species, scientifically? Hmm. Good question. What is your area of expertise? Given the choice, I'd choose philosophy. So, consider us as an idea, Louis. We are but a word in the minds of men. But this word is capable of anything. Empires have been built on words. Why should I trust you? I'm not asking you to, Louis. If you are still in doubt about the demons, I... I can assure you that won't last long. What has my mother got to do with all this? She embarked on a crusade many years ago to kill all the demons. That must have upset you. I imagine you retaliated. No, I'm afraid she never forgave me. Forgave what? We met when she was still just a young woman. I appeared to her in a different form because I didn't want to reveal the identity of Lord Mortimer at that time. She was looking for someone interested in the occult to decipher an ancient book. We spent many years together, until I revealed my true nature to her. The old book was Alazif, wasn't it? Did she speak about it? Not so long ago, yes. Indeed, it was already Alazif. She wanted to unlock the secrets. What are the demon's projects for humanity? Our aim has long since been to protect humanity from itself. On the other hand, although we give them the impulse to succeed, we don't all agree as to the path they take to achieve it. You're the devil incarnate. The devil? I'm not saying that all Judeo-Christian folklore hasn't served us, but the truth is, of course, something quite different. Please, don't look at us through the primitive prism of religions. I am not hiding any horns or goat's feet, Louis. I have no tail. Why do you bring up folklore? You mean that you've taken advantage of people's beliefs? No, not exactly. I mean that we in fact created them from scratch. It is amazing to see how mankind has such a strong need to believe in something superior to itself. 
It was very instructive for what was to come. And you truly have the power to manipulate the thoughts of men. That's right. Every demon has the capacity to infiltrate the minds of men and to read and steer their thoughts. And what do you do with this power? We help them, of course. And how is it you help men exactly? Let's just say that without us, man would probably never have left his cave. Fire, the wheel, tools, writing. We are the spark that inspires man to search, to grow, to evolve. Can you tell me more about your capacities, your supernatural powers? Supernatural? From my point of view, they are perfectly natural. Well, Louis, just because the monkey does not fly doesn't mean that we should consider the bird a supernatural creature. We are all part of a grand design. We are simply made like this. By developing our art, we are able to read thoughts as well as write in the minds of men. It is possible for us to make them bow to our desire, but it doesn't work without leaving some scars. You've been Mortimer for 600 years? How long have the demons been among mankind? Oh, I don't think I'd be lying if I said that we have always been here. If I follow you, you must have witnessed some of the greatest moments in history. <laughs> you could certainly say that, yes. I've noticed that you have a passion for the Crusades. Among other things, yes. Mainly the third. It was during the siege of St. Joan of Arc that I took possession of Lord Mortimer. And you've never changed skins or bodies since? I have used other envelopes, but only to carry out very short tasks. Apart from that, indeed I have been able to retain the identity of William Alexander Mortimer throughout the centuries. Did you experience ancient Rome? Oh yes. Luxury and decadence, Louis. My family did indeed reign supreme, but from this period I retain only the works of my friend, Marcus Vitruvius Polio. Did you know ancient Egypt? Oh yes, yes. We were gods on earth in those days. What did men call you then? Amenhotep IV. The... the tenth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty? Ooh, I see you're a connoisseur, Louis. Impressive. Did you know ancient Greece? In many ways, yes. One day Pericles, the next Parmenides. Just the memory of the time I spent working on acoustics with Pythagoras. Well, it, it moves me quite deeply, to tell the truth. Pericles. He's the one who brought Athens to its golden age, isn't he? Mm -hmm. In a way, yes. He established democracy and then died during an epidemic. It wasn't so long after his two sons passed away. Isn't that right? Excuse me, Louis. I... I would rather not relive any more of that, if you don't mind. You seem to be fascinated by Christ. He... You aren't him, are you? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, not at all. He was my father, though. Strange as it seems. I beg your pardon? Am I dreaming? Oh, please tell me I'm dreaming. We should have the chance to talk about all that again later, but yes, yes, he was my father. All the mythology surrounding Jesus of Nazareth really stems from my father's prideful need to show himself among men. Lucifer, the fallen archangel, left heaven accompanied by 133,306,668 angels. Is it true that there are that many of you? No, I assure you, Louis. Forget your Bible class, it's ridiculous. We are not angels, we don't have wings. There is certainly nowhere near a million of us. And for that matter, no sacred human text represents us correctly. There are several families, and the family to which I belong has eight siblings, 
including Gregory and myself. Sir Gregory is your brother? Yes, what can I say? <laughs> you can't choose your family. But it is very difficult to know exactly how many of us there are because a large number of our kind remain hidden or never reveal themselves even to us. Continue. Louis, it's time you opened your eyes. Come, you'll soon see. After you. Did what happened to Elizabeth Adams have anything to do with you? Mm, unfortunately, the poor girl became an issue between us in spite of herself. A family of demons is still a family, and as in all families, there are disputes. Elizabeth's family, the Adams, has always been under the patriarchal control of my father. As he and myself are not really on very good terms, sending poor Elizabeth here was terribly rude of him, really. You did accept, though? Mm, no, I would say rather I was presented with a fait accompli by Gregory and went along with the intention of helping her. But this is my castle, and everyone is the master of their own home. It was you who killed her. The child was already condemned, Louis. My father would never have let her be. I had to pass inside her mind and, yes, make her take her own life. Trapped between the unyielding control of my father and your mother's terrible treatments, I wouldn't wish a life like that on anyone, would you? So neither my mother nor Peru were ever guilty. You just gave me the runaround with that whole investigation. Now don't take it the wrong way. I was obliged to keep up appearances so that Gregory wouldn't suspect me. And it enabled me to size you up, Louis. If you could manipulate us mentally, what's the point of all the theatrics of the conference? You must suspect that we asked ourselves that very same question. For many centuries, we didn't organize any conferences, and most of the time, it ended in civil war between demons. Many of us were killed during this period. The idea of organizing conferences was the answer to everything, the interest being to erect some rules among ourselves. Our family first divided up all the principal countries of the world. Now, whenever one of us wanted to propose a major change between these countries, they summon the demon in question and initiate a conference. The demon that initiates the proposition doesn't have to give notification of the subject of the conference beforehand. Consequently, we participate along with our best assets. Once the humans are brought together, the conference begins, but we are forbidden to use our talents to influence the participants. The first meeting is held in order to expose the subject to all the participants followed by several days of reflection, during which we are allowed to be persuasive, but not to impose our will. A second meeting closes the conference with a final vote. So, for you it's a game, isn't it? I understand your remark, but after living several centuries, you stand back and enjoy what reflection and pleasure you can. But how do you agree on global policy? Locally, we often have competing interests, and sometimes we start wars between men which are linked to our disagreements. Most of the time, our father steps in and gives directives, which my family follow to the letter. Indeed, in my opinion, it is high time we moved on. What do you mean? I mean that a new era must begin. The old monarchic regimes are outdated, and it's time to evolve. So, Von Borchert, he was looking for the Alazif for you. Exactly. Alazif has always belonged to my family, Louis. And with good reason. My father wrote much of it. Can you tell me what you've done with... What? You mean the Alazif? No, I already know that. Sarah came here with it and got rid of it. I was thinking of Von Borchert. He isn't essential, but he is a trusted person. He's a prisoner at our headquarters in Paris. All right. I hope I've answered all your questions, Louis. Come, I have something to show you. There... there is one question that remains to be answered. 
Why me? Why tell me all of this? Oh, haven't you guessed yet? I think you sorely need the Golden Order, and you want to make sure you've got it. Really? You really think I'm that desperate? Well, I did think so, but now I'm not so sure. Look, we are of the gods, Louis. Always have been. You, as much as me. You are one of us, Louis. You too are a demon. Are you serious? You know it. Deep down inside, you know I am telling you the truth. Where do you think that natural charismatic presence comes from? Your talent must already have manifested itself somehow. Have you ever had any visions? No, stop it, it's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I... to you. I... What do you mean? Louis, I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know Sarah is not your mother. I, what? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis, but you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... No. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. Not too shaken up. You've experienced many significant events since your arrival. To tell you the truth, I don't get much time to ask myself those questions. Quite right. Best not to react to all this too suddenly. Take some time to think about it all. For now, I think you ought to find Sarah, my son. You ought to talk things over with her. So she's been lying to me all along? Let her justify herself. What's done is done. Sarah must explain herself. You must clear the air. We'll have all the time we need to talk afterwards. But all in good time. B before you join her, I'd like to give you something. As a demon, I would like to introduce you to your first talent. What do you mean? Open your mind, my son. Relax. You hold immense power. It's already there, inside you. Empty your mind of all thoughts. Just let me show you the way. I should relax. Open your mind. Hear my voice. Feel the vibrations and listen to what has been happening to you deep inside, but which you have been concealing. Trust yourself. It's all already in there. I... I can hear something. Now breathe. It's a sound, very, very faint. That's right. Concentrate on it. My voice is growing fainter, but I am here. I... whispers, words, mixed voices. Mm. Focus on one of them. Don't be afraid. I... I sense a stream. Some words are clear, but not all of them. Let them enter into your mind. I hear them. Now, now I can hear a clear voice. Well done, Louis. Congratulations. What was it? You are now able to read people's minds. I... what? You heard me. From now on, whenever a human speaks to you, you will be able to read their current thoughts. So, if you need to know something in particular from someone, all you have to do is make them think about it. But it, it'd be a violation of their most intimate thoughts, wouldn't it? To begin with, there's nothing obliging you to do it. You already had the ability without even knowing it. I just gave you the option of putting it into practice, if you want. Moreover, it would be wrong to evoke morality here. Every species is different, Louis, and this is the way we are made. That's all there is to it. You are free to use this talent or not. And what's more, it will be up to you to decide what to do with the thoughts you read. That is where the values of right and wrong do come into play. 
There are also a few rules you need to know that govern this talent when used between ourselves. You can read the thoughts of demons as well as of humans. But be careful. A demon more experienced than yourself will know that you are spying and will often react quite violently. It's considered bad form to play around the psyche of another demon. It's a question of courtesy. But let's be clear. What is most considered bad form is getting caught. So I would advise against trying to read the thoughts of Gregory, for example. Holm? Yes, the old grump is touchy and rather a stickler about the conventions. On that note, go and see Sarah, Louis. Otherwise, she might leave without you. We'll continue this discussion later, if you want. Just join me in my study when you've finished. Let's see what Mortimer's thinking about. He is thinking he might not have been clear enough with you. When I... told you not to try to read into Gregory or her experienced demons. It also applied to me, of course. You, you... you can hear me think? Of course I can. I can sense you. For the moment, your mind shines like a thousand lights because you haven't yet mastered the art of concealment from the psyches of others. So, I give you a weapon, and the first thing you do is try to shoot me with it? If my intentions were evil, you would already be at my mercy. So be very careful on whom you use the talent. All right. Please excuse me. And I... don't ever apologize, my son. You are far above that from now on. Now go. One more thing. If you want to know the truth about your birth, ask her about Paris, 1763 at 12 Rue des Martyrs. That's where she disemboweled your mother to steal you from me. It's not that I regret all these discussions, but I must hurry to the wharf. 